I couldn't see anybody. I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't hear screams. I just, it felt like I was out there on my own. And I was yelling and I was screaming. And finally I said, Lord, just let me die. Let me die. I said, I can't, I can't keep drowning. I just can't keep drowning because that's how I felt. And then I just let go. We begin our coverage with a victim of yesterday's Ride the Ducks boat tragedy on Table Rock Lake. Good evening, I'm Heather Lewis. Tia Coleman, who is critically injured from that accident, is part of the family that lost nine members when the boat sank last night. That family called our newsroom, hoping to share their story. Our Frances Lynn spoke to Tia Coleman. Frances, what did she talk about? Heather, Tia told me she goes on family vacations all the time. When they got to Branson, they actually went to the wrong duck boat business, but then she switched out her ticket for the 6.30 ride. Less than an hour later, Coleman would be one of two members of her family on that boat ride to survive. She told me what she remembered about the accident. A duck boat tour usually travels on land and water. Tia Coleman says she was told the tour will go on the water excursion first because of the incoming storm. She describes the captain taking over when they reached the lake. Once he takes over, there's big, huge waves choppy and everybody start getting like, hey, this is a little bit too much. And then it got really choppy and big swells of water start coming into the boat. Then a really huge wave swept over and when that wave swept over. The last thing I heard my sister-in-law yell was grab the baby. That's when the boat started sinking. And my head pushed up to the top of the water and I lost control. I didn't have anybody with me. I couldn't see anybody. And I know it wasn't, but it felt like I struggled for, it felt, it felt like I struggled for at least an hour. Um, but it was probably like 10 minutes. And I just remember I kept sinking, I kept sinking. And she was drowning and describes the water as being very cold. And I started floating. I was floating up to the top. I felt the water temperature raise to warm. And as I felt the water temperature raise, I jumped up and I saw the big boat that sits out there. I don't know what kind of boat is. It's huge, though. It was a rescue boat with people throwing life jackets into the water. And I said, Jesus, please keep, keep me. Just keep me so I can get to my children. Keep me, Lord. And I was swimming. I was swimming as fast as I could. And I couldn't reach. I could not reach the life jackets. She had to swim to the rescue boat. I swam over to the boat and I was holding on. But my legs and arms were so heavy from, from trying. They were so heavy. It was so heavy. She was then transferred to the Cox Health Hospital and is still in the process of recovering. Coleman told me about the 10 family members she was with, starting with her sister-in-law. She was there with her 13-year-old and her soon-to-be 3-year-old. I was there with my husband and our three children, who were nine seven and one. My in-laws were there, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law and the uncle who lives with them. She also told me there were life jackets, were life jackets on board. On they told us they're up here. This is where they are. They showed us where they were. They said, but don't worry about it. You won't need it. And we said, okay. So when the captain took over, I thought that at some point he would say, grab the jackets now. But we were told to stay seated, and everybody stayed seated. Nobody, nobody grabbed it. When that, when that boat is found, all those life jackets are going to be on there because nobody pulled one off. You don't, you know, you weren't supposed to grab them unless you were in distress, which we were, but he told us don't, we don't need them. Um, it was, I don't know what to say. It's definitely, it's definitely life-changing life-altering event. The only other surviving family member on that boat ride was her 13-year-old nephew. Tia doesn't know when she'll be able to leave the hospital, but Cox Health tells Color 10 that doctors are optimistic that she is on the right path to a full recovery. And there's some good news there for her. Very difficult story to share, and we thank her for that.